Do you girls know what happened to RJ? Oh. Come on. Spill the beans. I bet you know. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and uh, we have survived. We've made it through the polar vortex, cold, crazy, stupid, single degree temperatures. Um, but as the title and thumbnail suggest, um, not all of us made it through. And uh, not only did we have that issue with RJ, and I'm gonna talk about that and talk about what all went on, and we've, we've got some answers now. Um, but there's also Linda. Linda, what are you doing? Why are you not in the stall with your babies? Hmm? What's going on? Why are you out here? So you know that uh, Linda, this turkey right here, decided to set on eggs and hatch them out in uh, December, January time frame. And I tried and I tried and I tried to tell Linda it's a terrible idea to hatch babies in January. So we set the babies and Linda on a nest with a heat lamp and shavings and kind of barricaded them in there, gave her the perfect opportunity to give those babies every chance to survive. Well, they made it all the way through all the cold until yesterday morning, it was obviously, it was still cold, but not like single degree temperatures. And I walked outside and Linda is just out here roaming around with Larry and the other birds. I'm like, Linda, why are you not on your nest with your babies? And here's what I found. What in the world? Linda, what? Why in the world did you abandon your babies? These two needed you to survive and you abandoned them. So obviously I have no clue why uh, Linda abandoned her two babies, but even with a heat lamp, when it's just that brutally cold, there's only so much they can do to survive on their own when they're a couple of days old, just a couple of days old, you know, less than a week. Uh, Linda not only just got off of her nest and keeping the babies warm, but she completely left the stall. So she had to fly out. So she had probably been out here for a few hours and, uh, Nothing attacked them or her. Uh, nothing killed the baby chicks or baby turkey poults, except the fact that Linda abandoned her job. Listen, I know I have a lot of jokes and I laugh and play. It's just life. And that's why you don't hatch baby chicks in January. You wait until a little bit warmer temperatures. Now, could we have pulled them away from her, taken them from her, moved them inside the shop, put them in a brooder with a heat lamp and got them to survive? Probably. But raising baby turkey poults is hard enough, period, um, under the perfect conditions. They're hard to keep alive. Now, she had the best chance possible of getting those babies to, to survive, and uh, she gave up on them, I guess. So, Linda, I don't know what you're going to do now, but uh, your babies are gone, and uh, it is what it is. So, on to the story, the issue with RJ. Hey bear, what's up buddy? Hang on, let me shut the gate. What are you doing? Huh? Keeping everybody safe out here? Yeah? Oh, don't shake your head now. Everybody's just hanging out in here. The goats are, uh, most of them are off laying in the sun. Pepper's even out there just hanging out in the sun. Apparently she needs to go to the bathroom. So, RJ. What happened with RJ? What was going on? Why didn't we get him to a vet? I know you guys are going to have a thousand questions. Whenever he's done, we'll talk. Alright, Steve, we get it. So if you back up to earlier in the week, DJ was out here, my wife, shot a video for her channel called Do Your Best. She was in the pen with Steve and RJ and Fancy on Thursday. 
And on Thursday, RJ was being his normal cantankerous self, wouldn't he? Bouncing and playing. Hey, buddy. What do you think? Huh? You're getting awful fluffy. Yeah. Steven. Hey, bud. Don't you jump on me. Don't you do it. I'm not breedable. Not alpaca breedable for sure. Steve. I wouldn't do that. He might kick you. Steven. Oh. Hey. No, buddy. We don't do that. No. No, we don't do that. Oh. Oh, yeah. You tough guy. Mm-hmm. What? Okay, fine. You don't want to talk about it? And I'm sure some of you, or a lot of you, probably saw that video and noticed RJ was trying to breed Steve. Steve's our mini jack donkey there. And RJ was a male alpaca. So Steve and RJ have been in, a, in that pasture, in that pen together for months. Like, I don't even know, several months. And before... RJ came along, we had Rufus, and Rufus and Steve shared a pasture. We always called it the bro pen, because we'd put Rufus and Steve and whatever, you know, Isaac and Copper, and when we had a feeder steer, and, you know, it was just the fellas. That's where the fellas hung out, huh, Bear? And it worked out pretty good, right? Yeah? Okay. What are you doing, Izzy? Hmm? You come out here to uh, harass the birds? Or are you just here because I'm here? Hmm? I'm kind of surprised you're in this barn area. And Bear's, Bear doesn't even care, does he? No. Bear don't mind at all, because he's a good boy. Anyways, back to my story. On Thursday, DJ was down here, shot a video in that pasture with RJ and Rufus, and or RJ and Steve and Fancy. And RJ was trying to mount up on top of Steve, trying to breed Steve. And that was not uncommon. Like, that happened every once in a while. But Steve and RJ would always kind of, they never fought. They never really just went at each other. Nothing seemed serious. But they would play and chase each other, and RJ would harass Steve. And if Steve got to harass an RJ, RJ would spit in his face. And, you know, they just, I don't know about played, but they just established a pecking order. And that was it. So the next day, which was Friday, I came out here and was doing some stuff and kind of hanging out with the animals and shot a video and did everything. And I noticed, and I told you guys, I noticed that RJ was just a little bit off. Something didn't seem right. I thought he was kind of lethargic or sick. And, you know, I don't really know. I had no idea what was going on. And I kind of examined him and felt around and he just, he, he just seemed a little bit off. Okay. Nothing major, but just a little bit sick. So I went ahead and I, I treated him for parasites again. I wormed him and I gave him um, an injection, which um, was basically a vitamin mix that the vet had given us before when we had a sick alpaca. It's just kind of boost, like an energy boost, vitamin mix. And I thought, well, we'll come back and check on him tomorrow. Bear? Why are there buzzards circling the pen? And there's a bear, I mean a bear, a buzzard there in the tree. Is there something dead over there I need to know about? Did you kill an armadillo or a possum or a raccoon? I'll have to go check it out in a second. There's definitely something dead close by. Buzzards are circling us. And then that leads me to Saturday. When I came out Saturday, first thing in the morning, to check on everybody and bust ice, RJ was in bad shape. Like, really bad shape. He did not look good. Totally 100% 180 flip from what he looked like on Friday, which was just a little bit off. And it was a holiday weekend. We're in single digit temperatures. And there's just not a whole lot you can do sometimes when it comes to emergency vet care and things. I'm really kind of sneaking over here trying to see what these buzzards are doing. They're not circling the actual pasture that I'm in. They're kind of hanging out in the trees over here. 
anyways um there's only so much you can do with veterinarian calls sometimes and it was a holiday weekend i knew rj was really really sick and we had single digit temperatures i did not want to load him up in a livestock trailer and try to get him to a vet because we don't have anybody close that's going to be open on a holiday weekend and with single digit temperatures and the shape he was in i honestly didn't think i didn't feel like he would make it there alive and I started noticing that it didn't, I didn't think he was sick. I thought he was injured. Like he was very sensitive to the touch when I would, when I would feel of his rib cage, he, he got very, he was very sensitive and you could tell he was covered in shavings. Like he wasn't keeping himself clean. Usually they'll just shake their self off. All the shavings will fall off and kind of sort of keep their self clean. He wasn't doing that. And his head was down. He kept his head real low to the ground and just kind of had a weird moan when you touch him and so it, it kind of changed my thinking from we've got a sick alpaca to a, an injured alpaca but i didn't know what i examined him as best i could felt around of his ribs his legs i even laid him on the ground flipped him over and i couldn't find any obvious injuries okay now i'm curious those buzzards were hanging out and there was like three of them in the trees over here sometimes a bear will get out and kill an armadillo or something and i don't know about it but i don't see anything huh so as i said on saturday rj was not in good shape i did everything i could i i videoed him i sent video clips to several other friends that have farms and have animals and they sent videos to their vet and Without, you know, being a holiday weekend, nobody was nobody was going to really be able to do much. So, I, I gave him some more medication, gave him food, gave him water. He was eating alfalfa. Uh, he acted like he wanted to get up and move around, but he was just hurt. He's up on his feet and he's moving around today. But you can tell he is not feeling well. You all right? Yeah? No? I don't know what you said. So then Sunday morning, donkeys. <laughs> Sunday morning I came out here and it was single digit, you know, five, six, seven, eight degrees. RJ was in the barn, standing up, walking around with his head down low. I had to haul water because the water at the barn had frozen up. So had no water access down here, was hauling buckets of water. So I brought RJ some fresh water, gave him a little flake of alfalfa and some feed. And honestly, he, he wasn't in great shape, but he looked like he was feeling a little bit better. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but he just seemed like he was moving better. So I came back at around noon, brought some fresh water because it was, you know, really cold and everything freezes back up fast. So brought a couple buckets of water, RJ was okay at best and then it all went south from there uh bear <laughs> bear witnessed the whole occasion i came back to the barn about four o'clock and i was gonna give everybody you know some fresh water for the evening and uh check on everybody check on rj what what are you doing buddy hmm? and this is this is where the video gets a a little bit disturbing I, I i can't show everything i recorded a little clip so i could send to the vet and send to some friends because i had i've never seen anything like this in my life it was violent brutal what quit licking my fingers and rj i thought rj was um having a seizure that's what it looked like didn't it copper it you know what a seizure looks like you seize yourself, huh? So I thought RJ was having a seizure. And I'll show a few seconds of that. I won't show the whole thing because it's it's a... Let's just say for a G-rated channel. I try to keep it G-rated. PG, maybe PG-13 sometimes. It's a little bit disturbing. So I'm just going to warn you. Um, if you don't... Th there's nothing bloody, nothing violent. Well, I mean, it is a little bit violent. Anyways, I'll just roll a few seconds of the clip.
So I've never seen anything like that in my life. I've never seen an animal in such distress to the point where I was fixing to go in the barn and get a pistol and put RJ down because it was, it was that violent. And it kind of scared me a little bit because I had no idea. Um, so I sent that, I took that video and I sent it to two or three or four people that are livestock folks. And I texted to our veterinarian. She actually responded, um, I don't know, four or five hours later, probably it was late. It might've been the next day before she responded, but within about five minutes after that, um, wild, crazy flailing experience, RJ, RJ was dead. I mean, I, after he, after that stopped, I kind of got down on the ground with him and kind of held him down a little bit just to see before I actually was going to go get a rifle or a pistol or something. I was going to see if I could just get him to calm down. And he did. And within just minutes, he just, he just died right there in my arms. I mean, he, his head was in my lap and just, he was gone. Well, folks, I don't know what to do. Well, there's nothing I can do. I've been out here at the barn off and on today trying to take care of our buddy RJ and uh, oh man I think we're fixing to lose RJ he's uh he's not doing well he's still alive but uh, not for much longer I don't know, it's the weirdest thing. I uh, shot a video clip while I go. I come out here to try to get him up to eat and drink, and uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life. But uh, I think it was his last fight at life. He went from perfectly fine two days ago to, well, three days ago. And then two days ago, he was not, something didn't seem right. He was okay, but something didn't seem right. Thought maybe, you know, Steve or, or uh, Fancy kicked him and injured him or something. But yesterday, he went downhill fast. And uh, today, today's been even worse. And I have no idea why. You still with us, buddy? I don't think so. I think we just lost him. Had gummit. I don't know. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen at the barn from an animal. Jeez, Pepper. You know, it's just letting you enjoy your nap. I wasn't trying to disturb you. Or was it copper that disturbed you? Huh? I think it was copper. Everybody is definitely out enjoying the sunlight <laughs> oh man this is like uh, the warmest day we've had in a week probably or close to a week let's see according to my watch it's 51 degrees right now and only a low of 29 tonight you believe that it's only get down to 29 tonight you won't even be cold will you you're not even cold at five degrees probably isaac old man you just chilling by yourself over there? Hanging out with all your friends? <laughs> the sunlight feels good, doesn't it? I could probably lay down out here in the grass and take a nap with y'all. Oh, don't get up on my account. Just lay there. Well, you're a camera hog. You know that. Back to the story. So RJ died just laying right there in the barn. And I started texting that video clip to several people because I'm like, 
this isn't right. Something is not normal. This is not something I've ever experienced. Something that's not something I've ever seen. Not something I've ever heard of. And I started getting a lot of uh, messages back from folks and several people were like, I wonder if he was poisoned. They said, do you use rat poison at your barn? And I was like, uh, what about, they said, what, rat poison or fly bait? I'm like, man, not outside. There is rat poison, mouse poison inside the barn. And so it's possible, you know, I thought, man, maybe, maybe if a mouse got one of those little, those little green, you know, rat poison bait sticks and was able to tunnel through around the trim or something and get one of those out. Yeah, I could see, I could see RJ picking that up and eating it because it looks like a treat. So I was like, man, I, maybe, but I sure felt like it was an injury, but poison kind of made sense. And uh, by the, the next morning, our veterinarian had text and was, she was very concerned, I believe, um, to the point where she was like, has he had a rabies shot? <laughs> do your animal, do you have your donkeys had rabies shots? Um, she was like, we may need to get him sent off and do a rabies test. And I was like, what? Rabies? Not really? I, I mean, she goes, you, you, do you have raccoons around your barn? I'm like, well, I mean, bear, <laughs> wherever he went, will definitely kill any raccoon that comes into the pasture. But I've been trapping raccoons and bringing them back. But none of those would have bitten RJ. She was like, what about bats? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we live in the country. I'm sure there's some bats out here somewhere. But I was like, I don't know about rabies. And uh, so we went on back and forth about several things. Anyways, in the end, she was like, why don't you just load him up and bring him in and we'll do a ecropsy, necropsy, whatever you call it. Basically, an animal autopsy, just like we did with baby Jay um, last year because it was just, she died very randomly too. And so we did, I took RJ to the vet and still, you know, I was getting all these messages from people and a lot of them were like, and I've never seen anything like that in my life, but I was still sticking to my guns. I thought he was injured. I didn't think it was parasites. I didn't think it was meningeal worms, which she, the vet thought that could be a possibility too. Meningeal worm is transmitted from deer who poop on the pasture. Then snails come along and pick up these meningeal worm um, parasites. I mean, they're the whatever the larvae, and then they deposit them onto the grass. Then an alpaca comes along, eats the grass. Meningeal worms get into the alpaca. Then they go into the spinal, the spine, the spinal cord, and up to the brain, I believe. And I was like, well, kind of makes sense. That could be possible, but I don't think so because we've tried to stay on top of our parasite um, problem. You know. It, alpacas are you deal with parasites so we we worm we deworm everybody as much as we as often as we should so took rj to the vet dropped him off and she called us this morning and said she was done she did all of her exam and she was almost 100 percent confident she knows exactly what killed rj do you girls have any guesses hmm do you girls know what happened to rj Come on. Spill the beans. I bet you know. Steve, you were in here. Can you tell me what happened to RJ? Will you tell me? Huh? Because I think you know. You know why I think you know? Because I think you're guilty. Yep. I think Steve is guilty. So when the veterinarian examined RJ, she basically uh, did, she kind of did a, I, I don't know, I wasn't there, so I don't know what all she did, but she did end up doing some x-rays because I, I thought maybe Steve here had kicked him when he was trying, when RJ was trying to mount up and breed Steve, which, you know, Steve may not like that kind of thing, being a guy, because most men don't like another guy doing those kinds of things. It's just not the way it goes. So I thought maybe if RJ had mounted up on Steve and he kicked him right in the chest, 
he might have broke something. And what the veterinarian found did not surprise me at all because she did x-rays on RJ and she kind of did a, did a full body exam, feeling around, doing everything she could. And she found on those x-rays some broken bones right here in RJ's long skinny neck. So she got to feeling around. I don't know if she, she might have shaved off some of the hair or something, but got to doing a exam on his neck and found some teeth marks. Some teeth marks that probably look like those teeth right there. Yeah, he didn't like me messing with his mouth. Huh. So what I think happened, RJ was being an adolescent male coming into his, uh, his age, you know, his maturity age, and was trying to breed Steve. Steve got mad, got aggravated, got tired of putting up with it, and bit RJ on the back of the neck. So alpacas have that long skinny neck and bit him hard enough that he broke bones. The veterinarian did some x-rays on uh, on RJ's neck and you can obviously tell, it isn't like, you can see it 100% in the x-rays that he has a broken neck. And I would have thought it would have paralyzed him, but the way the vet talked, it, it was like a, it broke bones, but it didn't sever the spinal cord. So that's why his head was hanging down so low. He was hurting to raise his head up because well, he had a broken neck and there were several bone fragments floating around. So basically when Steve bit that vertebrae, it, it's, it broke off pieces of the vertebrae in the neck and, uh, it was, it was hurting. It was an injury, obviously. And it just took several days for it to progressively get worse. I say several, three days was the total. So the first day he was sore and hurt, but he was still able to move around. The second day, it, it got him, he was down, like it, anytime he moved, he did not want to get up, and that's why his head was down. And then that violent bouncing, flailing around was just his last struggle to survive, try to relieve the pain, I guess, or something had moved and lodged and pinched a nerve, and basically it was maybe involuntary, I'm not sure. So, while I do believe Steve's the culprit and Steve is guilty, guilty of murder on uh, poor RJ. I'll take the blame for it. Obviously, it's my fault. I had RJ and Steve together. I didn't uh, see a problem because they've been together for months. They've been together in the same pasture with Fancy for months. Um, and even before RJ was born, Rufus and Steve were together. Uh, the veterinarian said she had called a couple, a couple other vets and called OSU and was trying to figure some things out. And they basically said, you know, a mature, even a mini, a mature donkey is going to get territorial. And that alpaca who was an adolescent coming into maturity was trying to establish a pecking order and, uh, was just Steve. When Steve just, when Steve bit RJ on the, on the back of the neck that, uh, he bit him hard enough to break bones and it was just a territorial um, thing. Not necessarily Steve being aggressive, but just animals and their pecking order. Should I have probably had them separated? I don't know. You know, it's, there was never a problem until there was. So does that mean we separate all of our animals and never let anybody in together? You know, that's just not how it works. So it does, it does suck. I mean, RJ was a cool he was a cool cat, man. He's a cool character. I loved RJ. He was a lot of fun. He was our last, uh, uh, our last lineage of the line of uh, King Rufus, King of the Alpacas, King of the Donkey Poodles. <laughs> uh, we had Prince RJ, I guess, and you know, it's my fault. It's it's not Steve's fault. I'm not blaming Steve. Steve's a Steve's a good guy. He's just he's just doing what donkeys do. And even even though Steve is a mini donkeys. Many donkeys even, but uh, mainly the, the larger breed donkeys are used a lot of times for livestock protection against coyotes. They will actually catch coyotes or feral dogs even that get in the pasture and try to harm, you know, cattle or calves or sheep and goats, whatever they're in with. They'll grab them and literally shake them to death. And that's what Steve did. Steve, in his mind, did his job. And you can't blame a guy for that, I guess. And I know some of you are going to be upset with us. You're going to be upset with me, and, and I get it. I totally understand. Like I said, I'll take the blame for it. But uh, before you get in the comments and, and get honest about not taking him, getting him to a vet in time, 
listen, first off, it was single digit temperatures, not safe to get animals out and traveling down the highway unless you just have to, which that case, you know, I can see where you would have to. It was a holiday weekend. There's just no veterinarians at work. And once the damage was done, it was too late. I mean, basically the vet said he was, he, he was a dead animal for a couple of days, but he just didn't know it yet. I mean, the, the injury, the broken spine was a broken spine and we weren't going to fix it. It was just a matter of time before he moved just right to do enough damage to the spinal cord to actually cause death. And it, it happened on, on Friday or Thursday night, Thursday night, Friday sometime. And by Sunday, we lost RJ. And the only way I know to put this to folks is that's farm life. It's just life on a farm. It's in a sense, it's no different than Linda and those baby turkeys. Uh, those two little baby turkeys, you know, died because Linda got off the nest and walked away and didn't come back. And I have no idea why. Like, I, I have no clue. I don't know. Why did Steve, you know, bite RJ so hard that he broke bones in his neck? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer other than Steve's an intact male. RJ was an intact male, and they were just fighting for dominance, even though they're not the same species. And it's not that, that RJ was, was a breeding threat to, you know, to Steve, but it's just like two... <laughs> It's like two men in college, you know. There's a pecking order. Guys bump chests, and you put men out there on a football team, and even in the NFL, you got guys that are highly paid professionals, and there's that testosterone flowing through them, and when something goes wrong, they end up in a fight on the field, even though they know better. It happens. And uh, unfortunately, we lost, uh, we lost one of the good ones in RJ. He was a lot of fun, and we're definitely going to miss him. RJ was our miracle baby out of Rufus that wasn't supposed to be able to have babies. Uh, the veterinarian did a semen test on, on Rufus and told us he was sterile. So we had him castrated so that he could be in a pen with another intact male and not them not fight and kill each other. We tried to do our best there. And uh, lo and behold, we ended up with RJ and Reba. So I don't think DJ and I are going to be getting another male alpaca. We're not, you know, we, we let... Uh, Marie have, uh, always, well, has Jerry, and she, I don't know if Marie's got any females for him yet, but we're not going to try to get Jerry back. We're not probably not going to breed alpacas anymore. We've had them for, I don't even know off the top of my head, four or five years, I guess now, and I think the three we've got are we're just going to hang tight with there and, and not breed any more alpacas. Um, just stick with what we have. So, anyways, guys, sorry for the downer today. Um, it just is life on a farm and those things happen and, uh, not everybody understands it. And I get that we do our best to take care of all of our animals the best way we can, the best way we know how to. And, uh, it's just life on a farm happens. Sometimes we lost a couple baby chicks that probably should have made it. And we lost RJ for a senseless reason that he probably should have made it too. So guys, I might not have made you smile today. Captain Ron, cameraman Ron, um, might not have uh, might not have approved of that message, I don't guess. But do something today to make somebody smile because you just never know. It just might change the world. So guys, thanks for watching. I promise <laughs> better things to come. So we'll see you on the next video.